Hello, welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Sami Nadine Jung. I am a former financial journalist turned media and communication scholar, currently doing my PhD here in Vancouver, Canada. I make content everything from PhD, career change, navigating your 20s and 30s all together. Um, so for those of you who are interested in following up with my journey, you can follow me through this YouTube channel. So this morning, I really had to get my shit together. Uh, I recently worked really hard on one abstract that was submitted to a journal and um, that was not accepted. I mean, of course, even when I was working as a financial journalist, the rejection is something that I had to always get used to. Nonetheless, uh, when you put a lot of energy and soul into something, it's always hard when you face that uh, rejection. And today was that moment, especially this morning after a long Easter holiday weekend, it was really hard for me to focus on to my work. And I actually had a chat with one of my other colleagues who had defended her PhD um, dissertation last year. And she showed me a collection of notes that she's taken in terms of how to prep for her comprehensive exam, the exam that I'll be taking at the end of next term, which means that this summer, uh, the second quarter, would have to be extremely focused time for um, lots of reading, thinking, and writing. So comprehensive exam is something that every PhD student has to um, go through. And once you pass that exam, then you get a PhD candidate title. So depending on whether you have passed your comms, you will stay as a PhD student or you will uh, progress as a PhD candidate. As I am just about to prepare for my comms now, I've also been a little bit stressed in terms of um, just trying to get everything in to my, in, into my personal life. Um, uh, there were a lot of things that were going on and to make um, everyone around me happy and also myself happy. I think I'm coming to a conclusion where I can only do so much. Um, there is a limit to my body and my mind and I just can't push myself as I used to when I was in college. I can no longer pull a sequence of all-nighters and be able to write, uh, you know, three papers in 10 days. That's not something that I can't do anymore. I just need to accept that and be responsible for my health and my mind. So that's something that I've been trying to do. And this morning when I got that rejection letter, all of a sudden, just like, I, I think I, 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 I've been doing relatively well in terms of um, sort of countering this um, academic pressure, like showing academic rigor by producing a lot of work, publications and whatnot. As you progress your PhD, um, you know, one would think that you become an expert in one field. I... <laughs> I don't know. I, even though I thought I'd been fairly well informed about my discipline and about my field, the more and more I study, the more I feel, feel like I know nothing. So I think today is the day that I really had to rethink about why I exist as a human being and as a scholar. Who do I want to be? What kind of scholar am I? How do I want to position myself as a scholar? What is my philosophy of research and writing and teaching? What are some values that I bring to the field that I would not like to compromise because that will change who I am? You know, these are the kinds of questions that I had to rethink about and I think I will have to continue to think about. Um, and one lesson that I've learned through the recent talk that I had with the Harvard professor, it was such an honor for me and privilege to be able to moderate that talk given by Dr. Yawen Lei, professor of Harvard in the Department of Sociology. And she recently just got tenure, which means that 
you really have much freedom to do whatever research that you want. And in order to get to tenure, it's a really extremely grueling process because you are given any time between four to seven years to really refine your research uh, portfolio uh, in terms of publications, school services, teaching, and everything. And, and that's extremely a grueling process. I mean, you finish your PhD that's that, that you have been doing for five seven years and then on top of that you do that process once again because I guess I was quite stressed this morning and I was driving in my car and I haven't done this in the past couple of years but I literally just screamed my head out uh, three four times in my car even after I screamed so hard because I just needed to let out my stress, but I did not know like this mix of package of emotions, whether it's anger, stress, like self doubt, um, not as inspired as before. And I think one of the challenges that I faced as a PhD student is that like when I was in London, I felt so inspired in every way and every day to continue to do the kind of research that I really was really convinced in. But now here in Vancouver, maybe it's because of the mundane everyday routine that is very compact and I have to do, I have to wear a lot of different hats, you know, as a researcher, as a teacher, as a student, and as a scholar, as also as a homemaker to, to care house chores, and as a professional, as a YouTuber, and as I want to create good content, um, helpful content, I felt just really, I guess I really, I got really stressed out, but I think as I was driving my um, car back from work this afternoon, I just tuned into um, some of my um, go-to YouTubers who also go through similar um, life paths as mine. So other PhD students, PhD candidates who are going through this process. And funnily enough, what I realized why I vlog the way I vlog right now is because I actually relate so much to their lives even though I don't know them, even though I've never met them. Just so you guys react to my life after you watch my videos, right? I've never had a real interaction with them, but there are elements in their videos that I feel connected to. Somehow it makes me feel like I am not alone. There are also other people who believe in what I believe in. There are people who do the same kind of work because they believe in what they do. And that really encouraged me to come back home and put together my computer, my phone, and I decided to put this video together because for me, I realized that vlogging is also an expression of myself and my research. And I, I take that as a platform where I really can share the kinds of daily struggles that I have that many people also can connect to and connect with so that even only one message can can lighten up your day then that serves my purpose and it's a documentation of my journey and my growth and I believe that in the era of um, such technological development that it takes place so at, at such a fast pace. I really think that we really need to think about our agency, how to use these technologies to benefit us, not work against us. But yeah, I, I realized that this is why I vlog. While I'm documenting my own growth, I also hope that the message of support and courage to take on challenges can be conveyed to others as well, even if they happen in a very small way. And of course, we can always strive to achieve something huge, but I, I really enjoy the path and the process where I'm on. And I, I try to take that with joy and gratitude. But of course, some moments of our society really put us down and make us doubt ourselves, our potential. And today was one of those days for me. And I am putting my shit together by really asking myself all these questions about my own self and my relationship to the world. What do I want to contribute? What values do I stand for? How do I get to creating those values then? I'm still navigating my path around that, but I really hope that I can be that person that 
that can be helpful. And three things that I learned from moderating this amazing talk given by a Harvard professor. First thing that I learned is that you have to be humble. The kinds of email exchanges that I had with the professor, it was so down to earth, very appreciative and very humble. Um, always say thank you so much, thank you very much. Also extremely uh, personable and that really touched me. And also my PI and my advisor are are people like that. So I really appreciate the kinds of leadership that they show us as a person and as a scholar. Number two, commitment and dedication to social change. But, so the professor's work, Gilded Cage, Technology, Development and State Capitalism in China, she narrates the stories of those whose lives have been transformed for better or worse, mostly worse, um, by China's rapid rise to economic and technological dominance, and also how technology is continuing to be used as an instrument to work against the more disadvantaged communities of people. A lot of graduate students and people who were listening to the talk were also inspired by the kind of commitment and dedication that she had in order to have this work out. So that's the second thing that I wanted to highlight. Lastly, number three, when you encounter a great scholar, it's like meeting a whole new world that you've never experienced or entered before because they know so much and you're entering a new, you're encountering this whole new world that you've never entered before. And so for me, each time when I can meet such a scholar or such a leader, I get incredibly inspired. And I want to be that kind of person as well for others. And that is one of the reasons why I, I, I am on this PhD track after working in the industry for a long time. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I, I hope that um, you get to enjoy the process of growing. And I'll come back for the next video.